Good evening and uh, welcome back to the bird room for another episode and um, I'm Shane. Today we're just going to have a quick look around the, uh, the bird room, concentrate on some of the young birds that we've bred this year and also give you a look at, um, especially one of the cock birds, especially the, the greenfinch line. Uh, it's a bird that Mark bred and now I've acquired, uh, which is the baseline for our bloodline of greenfinches as well as we'll look at some of the uh, Norwich uh, crossbill, so uh, a mixed bag uh, just to keep everyone interested obviously some of the birds are coming on really well some at the moment especially in the green finches like I explained in uh, Wednesday's episode they're all getting singled off as I'm picking through them but there is there is one or two um, younger birds in there uh, nest mates that may not look decent enough now but probably will and we'll, we'll follow the progress through the uh, molting season and uh, obviously you can see the progression uh, ready for the shore bench and now obviously to newcomers um, I do look at buying birds and first thing they'll see is not what they might expect later on down the line so I'll explain that in a bit of detail as we're going through the video um, I'll also show you crossbills now as you know, I've bred some crossbills, um, Mark did, and now my crossbills, there's none left. Not died, the pesky little buggers over time have just escaped. And I did explain before that uh, crossbills know how to escape. I've shown you what I did, put uh, perches over the doors to stop them from lifting. First time, I won't go out of the flights. This time, I won't go out of the cages, which I took him out of the flights because obviously he got out of there put them into a big flight cage and the little bugger got out what can you do I mean obviously in the daytime I have my windows open and um, must have got out while I was at work and uh, well there's no way to be seen put it that way so I'm gonna I'm gonna put his mother back in the flight and just let her carry on with the other crossbills but I will show you uh, some young crossbills is some really a couple of really nice ones coming along but these are what Mark bred like I said the ones I've bred which I've shown you in the past they're no longer here they're flying around somewhere in Surrey I could imagine anyway so sit back and relax and enjoy the episode so what we have here is generations of green finches all cock birds we've got um, this bird here is a 2016 bird. This bird here has been the current year bred bird. And anyone that knows, um, obviously Mark Ponting's birds, knows that um, originally uh, it did really well on the shore bench with uh, a greenfinch cock, which is actually the father to this one here. Now this greenfinch cock, we always use say the pink ring bird because that was the um, genetics down the line and what we keep a track on uh, with the um, the rubber rings that we used to put on the birds uh, to keep the uh, bloodline so obviously we know just at a glance that the pink ring birds have come from obviously the pink ring uh, line so this is a son this one here is a son of the uh, pink ring bird that Mark did a lot of winning with this is his grandson the one in the middle is obviously it's an improvement this is an improvement from that the color on this green finch is outstanding I mean you're not really going to see it uh, they're all heavily in the molt and the improvements uh, as you look back on you will be able to see improvements along the way now notably uh, just at a glance now I can see that the bird in the middle has got a better head than obviously its father the current year bred bird has already got you can get it up, have a look, the body of the birds already lacking in the head a bit but it is a current year bred bird and it has got a lot of developing to go so this is this is what I'm saying along the lines now that's a lot of years work has gone into obviously to to get the green finches to this level 2016 obviously 2000 and 14 or 15 uh, when Mark really started developing the birds and started doing a lot of winning with the pink ring lines 
to come out with this. I remember um, actually seeing this bird in the flesh before me and Mark was partners, and he actually um, he actually beat me uh, at a show with this actual bird. So yes, I mean it is. You can see the improvements along the lines, and this is where sometimes you have to keep the birds back thinking long term. Um, credit to Mark. None of these birds have been bred in my place these have all been bred in Mark's place and obviously he's packed up now and I've got the, the line to carry on with uh, to uh, cross into mine that obviously mine and Mark's lines of bird are very closely related anyway so just by looking this is only the cock bird line not the M bird line I mean I could easily get M birds out that are related to these, but then obviously you're not seeing the potential of it because obviously an M's a different to a cock, the different colour and everything. But yes, this is a baseline of it, and there will be improvements to be carried on. Say, for instance, what I may do this coming year is pair um, the older bird to a younger M bird um, of the same line, or for instance, pair the current year bird with the mother to it so obviously you crossing back in um, mother daughter uh, mother son father daughter or maybe skip a generation and put this cock bird to the mother of this bird it all depends on which way we do it and looking at the paperwork close to the breeding season i'll have a better idea and understanding of what um, birds this one's bred uh, what the nest mates to this one are and obviously the older bird can really technically go back to any of uh, the young end birds because they're not that closely related with him being five years old now so plenty of uh, options to play with with these birds I have been contacted by a few people obviously looking for green finches but as you can imagine at the state that they're in now, they, they're not worth looking at um, if it's coming from a buyer's perspective. Unless, unless you've bred birds and you know what state that they're getting. But within three or four weeks, these birds look totally different altogether. But that's, that's to come at that point. But like I said, I do know, obviously, where this bird's come from, where this bird's come from. It's all on records, and this is the importance of keeping breeding records. So now we're going to take a, a look at the end line. Uh, so, the end, this end, is the mother. This is the daughter. Notably already, the, um, the colour on the, um, the current year end is much better than the mother. <coughs> the reason this is, is because it's been paired to a better colour cock bird. Uh, which is the pink uh, ring line, which is the better colour birds. Obviously, this being a buff anyway, it's got a, a decent size on her. But this, this is going to turn out to be a fabulous bird. Same thing again, they are all genetically related to the other birds that I've shown you. Um, where it's not the nest mate to the cock bird, the current year cock bird, but it is in the broad spectrum of things genetically related I don't have obviously the mother to this one or the grandmother because ends don't the ends seem to die on you more than what all the cock birds do and it always is that way it always is you have better birds and it always seems to be the end birds not the cock birds but genetically you can see that the uh, improvements are coming already come on lady What I'm going to do now um, is get the nest mate hen to this one, obviously the daughter to this one, and quickly show you the difference and show you that it will improve and obviously further down the line, like I said, I will uh, keep an eye on it so everyone can see what changes they make uh, throughout the, uh, the molting period and obviously into to the later autumn months. So what we have now is two nest mates, two end birds. The end bird that obviously I've had my eye on. But this is our nest mate. 
and you may ask why some of the birds have got uh, BBC rings on and some have got IOA rings on. Now the simple answer to that is basically uh, in in the flight which was flight four the M bird is known for chucking the chicks out. Uh, she did it last year, she did it as soon as I put the IOA rings on she'll chuck them out. So knowing that it's obviously in my notes I put BBC rings on never covered them up and didn't have a problem she never threw them out the BBC rings British Bird Council are brown uh, and they blend into the, the leg a little bit better whereas if I know an end's not chucked the chicks out then I would try with IOA rings because obviously they're coded to, to our ring code but yes as you can see uh, there's quite a noticeable difference there I do think this young end will develop quite well. She's got the potential there already. I mean, when I just caught her up, um, I had to double check because she's actually come on since last week when I looked at her. And she will keep developing. Whilst catching her up, obviously, there's the second round end, um, the sister to these, but not the same nest, which I've not even looked at yet because when she was in the flight, uh, she didn't look anything whatsoever. But as they've just been catching up, like I said, I've just had to double check. She's actually come on really well, so I'll, I'll catch her up quickly and put her in a cage. Uh, the, the cage that she will be in is slightly bigger. It's going to be an English pattern. These cages are both Scottish pattern. Uh, but before I do that, what I'll just quickly show you is, as we've got them there, we'll put them there like that. I've still got the mother to these two out there. The mother two daughters so these two um, this is the end I've just had in the cage and this is um, the second round end both the uh, I wouldn't call them runts but the runter two of the nests obviously second round first round still got plenty of growing to do this being uh, the smaller one that's still not developed as good as the um, the better nest mate, which I will actually get into shot for you so you can actually see the comparable distance or difference between one I've picked out already. So three current year ends, um, all bred in flight four. The mother's uh, still on display, I will grab her shortly. But before I tell you which one it is, I'm just going to give you a couple of seconds to have a get them all up, have a quick look and tell me which one you think. Clear to see, isn't it really? This is the better one of the three. Better colour, a lot better feather actually. This one's got decent feather. A nice short feather I want on them. Short feather, but I still want the birds to be that cobby, that style that I'm looking for, which this one's showing. It's got a good stance as well it, it stands really well if I was to criticize what is lacking it said for me is lacking um, quite thin on the head but she's a young bird so I'm not too worried about it now just as a reminder this is the mother to them hefty bird for an end bird that and um, but like I said with it being a buff you can expect that in a way. So last but not least with the green finches, brother and sister. Both the same nest round one and they're both coming on really well in my opinion. So we'll just see what they turn out later on in the in the line. So here we've got um, two young fives. Um, both got uh, green rings on. As you can notice, see the both rings are on the right foot. So that tells me that these are nestmates without even looking in the book. It also tells me that obviously uh, they are the first round rings because the first round I would put on the right leg, second round on the left leg. Um, one already, this one already, is clearly a lot better than the other one. 
what I will do now is catch um, the uh, parents up to this, the cock and the hen, and take a look at them in comparison to obviously the better one. There's no point in me uh, showing you this one, although it, it does actually look better, it's pulling a lot in there. But we'll, we'll uh, compare it to this bird on the, uh, well, my right, your left, it'll probably be. <coughs> so, this is the parent to the one I'll show you shortly. The end bird, as you can see, she's got a green uh, ring on. Just so I know that that's the end to that one, which I'll show you shortly. This being uh, the adult cock bird, the father to them. At the moment, they look absolutely terrible not even finished the malt yet but obviously through through breeding season you can still see slightly but they were in a I don't want to say three or four weeks time they'll look totally different again now if we take a look at let me move that out of the way the mother and daughter the daughter's improved on the mother and obviously we are going in the right direction with them. So this is um, of uh, current year um, Norwich, a buff feathered bird. I just like the feather on this bird. Um, I'm not going to mess about catching a couple more uh, Norwich up, but I do like the feather on this. If I had to pick anything, uh, I would say his head. His head's not big enough. But then again, it's still got developing to do, as everyone knows, birds carry on developing. Uh, not quite through the malt yet, it looks still a bit patchy where he's uh, still got to lose a few feathers, but by bathing regularly, spraying the birds regularly, that'll help him out, and, or maybe her out I think rather rainish looking to me I'll get her back in her flat cage with the rest set her down so this is the last bird I'm going to show you today this is um, a brown pastel um, I wouldn't say cock or hen because the red poles are not easy to sex this time Obviously being currently a bred bird anyway. This bird is uh, bred from um, a pair uh, from the um, Meek Turner line, uh, Paul Meek and Stacey Turner. And I think it's lovely feather quality on this bird. The uh, the brown pastels as a rule, are not they've not got the type or size of uh, the normals. Um, I know them as lessers still, we've called them lessers for years. Um, there's lessers and mealies obviously, and this to me, obviously, I still call it a lesser red pole. Lovely bird though. Never been in a show cage or any type of cage before, uh, but I'm probably not going to be showing him this year, so I'll just leave him to get on with his business and, and feather up properly. One thing to realise with red poles, they do come through the malt faster and they do wean off faster than uh, other British finches such as your goldies, um, siskins, bullies, all them type of birds. But lovely bird nonetheless. So that was just a look at some of the young um, that we've bred this year. I mean, I've got bird crap all over my hands now, catching the birds up. Them bloody red poles are like lightning. If I was to show you through, um, obviously catching more birds up in the flight, it stresses the birds out, even if they're not in that flight. Same with catching the red pole up, he's in, he's in a flight cage with other birds. And it's just not worth the hassle of stressing the other birds out. And I, I could be here all day uh, catching birds up and showing you this and showing you that, but just by showing you birds is not going to get me anywhere. Showing you some birds and, and the genetics to them and how they'll turn out is a different story. So this is obviously why we keep uh, breeding records so we can look back 
year upon year, see what is related. Last thing you want to do is breed too closely, maybe like brother and sister. Um, genetically, that is not um, recommended whatsoever. Keeping regular records of your birds, you look next year and if you are looking to obviously show the birds by pairing obviously father, daughter, mother, son, grandfather, uncle, you, you're not going to go far wrong if you've got a good stud to start off with, you're not going to go far wrong down the line improving that line, um, getting the most and the best out of either the cock bird or the end bird and every two three years bringing fresh blood in to put into your line to dilute that outcross and then carry on the genetics going across again for five or six years so for me it's it's a must uh, breeding records and and you can always trace back to where things are or if you was to lose a bird um, and you wanted to know the parentage if it were a really good bird say for instance say if it was your current year bred cock bird couldn't you bred bird even you was to lose it but if it is a really good bird that's caught your eye you can always go back next year use the parentage of them birds to obviously recreate that and hopefully it's as good as what that one was so yes that was just a, a little insight today on obviously some of the birds so far as what else is going on in the shed not very much um, as a look around, uh, <laughs> feathers everywhere. Birds are starting to come through really nicely. And like I said, as, as the season progresses into the shore season, you'll be able to see more of the birds. Noticeably, the chaffinches, um, you would have seen them in, in an earlier episode. Uh, you've seen them make a nest, but obviously the reason they never went to nest is because they went in the malt. They're completely through the malt now. I'm looking at the chaffinch and she looks stunning. And in a future episode, I will get her out and show you. Um, fully through them all, ready to go on the show bench if, if I was to show her. Uh, but like I said, other other birds, other greenfinches. I mean, this one here has lost his tail. Current year bred bird, but I think what it was is when uh, I've either <laughs> had him in the show cage or when this little blighter got out, obviously flying around the shed for a while before he uh, found the open window on probably not in some cases for them and crossbills are, are very clever and that could have scared him and obviously being out the window would have knocked himself up a little bit and, and dropped his, his tail feathers but it's not a problem it'll grow back um, <coughs> seed wise um, they're basically getting the same thing um, greenfinch mix soaked for the young greenfinches um, which actually as it speaks of it's, it's just here ready to feed them and um, and the canaries um, bullfinches everything else like that are getting a, a, a just a general soak seed mix with obviously green food now as you all know I'm quite an advocate for no it's not being tight or anything like that but or fresh greens and fresh wild uh, seeds and, and anything like that and uh, one thing I can't stress enough is if you have got time and if you have got a place where you can source it that is not tainted by uh, pesticides go and pick some because your birds will devour it I give it to literally every bird in my shed now and, and I'm lucky that I've got a good source or a good area where I can pick it from where vegetables are grown organically so they use absolutely nothing over there and, and if you have got time go and collect some the birds enjoy it, keeps them fit, jumping around hang them up in your flights and the birds will be stretching the wings and, and feeding on it at the same time but yeah I mean there's not much really happening otherwise obviously just Shore training the birds, which brings me on to obviously the next subject. Shores are, are starting to reopen again now, and I've probably three or four local CBS shows I will be attending over the next two months, which I'll, I'll keep you informed as I do. 
and it is very important if you have got a, a local club, a CBS club, to support them. Because without, I mean, don't get me wrong, I've had, I have had comments uh, made to me in the past. Obviously, if your birds are that good, why do you show at CBS shows? Uh, instead of like all British, which I've obviously done all British and the Yorkshire show and um, and the Maidson show, which is I'll explain in another episode. But it's vitally important that you do support these clubs because without the general um, breeder exhibitor, the shows would be no longer there. And that's that's where I started off. I started off uh, local CBS shows being Maltby Bramley, which is no longer around. Brinsworth Cage Bird Society, no longer around. Harworth Cage Bird Society, no longer around. These are all ones that's up north, by the way. And um, it's a shame. And if we don't support them, these clubs will just go. And and then what we're going to do? We're going to complain. And we always complain anyway, saying, you know, there's no this, no that. But it's down to us at the end of the day. So get out and support your local clubs. Look on Facebook on the uh, UK Shows and uh, Sales Group, and and find a local show to you. Just visit if you're not if you're not wanting to show, visit and and support the club. You know the the entry most clubs is only like a pound. See the lovely birds on display there. Get to know breeders that's local to you. There's many things you can pick up from a CBS show. But in my opinion, go out and support them. Um, it's not expensive to, to show your birds. And if you are interested in showing birds and don't have a clue on what to do, send me a message. But as the, the weeks progress, I am going to go more into detail on things like showcase standards. Types of show cages for various birds, your British, your Fives, Gloucesters, Norwich, New Colours and, and things like that. Show schedules, because they can be so confusing to to anyone doing it the first time but like i said that'll be in a future episode and try and enlighten some people if they are looking to exhibit it because i would encourage anyone that wants to do it uh, it's exciting you're going through that door uh, when it opens to public and seeing how your birds are fared against obviously people that's been showing for years but yes um, that'll be in a future episode but that's going to be it for today uh, I've got to get out, I've got a seed delivery just turned up, we've got a new puppy and uh, it needs, <laughs> needs a lot of attention. It's like having a, an house full of uh, babies in our house at the minute, not to mention the one due in a couple of months, so busy, busy. Anyway, thanks for watching today. Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments or message me on Facebook. I am trying to get around to everyone's messages, don't forget I... Uh, Self-employed full-time um, and obviously the bird company full-time so got kids to sort out, the birds to collect so there's, there's a lot going on but I will get round to you at some point and if it is desperate look on the website um, directbirdproducts.com my telephone number's on there don't be shy to give me a call and, and ask me if it's really urgently or if you just get any urgent questions or, or need something urgently just give me a call and I will assist as any way I can. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you haven't already, like and subscribe. And um, anything you need for your birds, head over to our website, directbirdproducts.com, as I've said. And I have mentioned previously, we have got some show cages coming in, so anyone that is wanting them, don't worry. They are coming available soon. I'm just waiting for them to be painted up as we speak. Thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next one.